On this week's Force.com cast episode, we're going to be talking about return statements within try-catch finally blocks. Anup Yadev, whose uh, Twitter handle you can see at the top there, at Anup, sent me a link to his blog post, which is also linked below, uh, over a week ago, just letting me know that he'd been doing some experimentation with try-catch finally blocks and return statements, and I noticed some strange behaviour that he thought might be worth sharing through the Force.com cast series. So, first of all, thank you, Anup, for sending me across that information. Um, and what I've done is I've taken a, uh, an example that's similar to an UPS code here. And what we're doing is we're going to return uh, an integer value of the return code. And we've got a try, catch, and finally block. And all we're doing in the try block is throwing an exception, uh, causing the system to error. We're going to catch that exception, um, print out that we're in the catch statement. We're hoping to return a value. Have the return code set to be 1, and then return that return code value. Um, and then in the finally block, what we're going to do is we're going to debug out that we're in the finally block, um, set the return code to 2, and then return that return code. And this final bottom line here, return code equals 3, return return code should never execute because we should always get an error. We go into execute anonymous now, and we run this code. What we can see is that the returned value is 2. So we've gone in, uh, we can see that the debug statement's fired for the catch return. The return code's probably been set to 1, and then we return that value, but the finally method runs, and in that finally method we have another return value uh, where we return the return code value, so it sets that to be 2. What's interesting, however, is if we comment out this second return statement, Once that's saved up, we run it again. What we now see is that the return value is 1. That's quite interesting. So our return statement from our catch box evidently being called and is running as the you know, primary return statement, and we've set the return code value to 1 there. However, the value uh, we still get in the debug statement here of the finally returned being run, um, and after that we're setting the return code again to 2, so why isn't it returning 2? What we can also do is if we debug this here and put in an extra debug statement, which is going to tell us what the value of the return code variable is at that time, and go in and execute this code, can see that catch return is fired, finally return, debug statement is fired, the return code must then be set to 2, but the value that's returned is 1. So what does this mean for us? Well, in Salesforce's uh, developer notes and documentation around the try-catch finally statements, they say that uh, the finally block will always be run after the catch block and that any code within it is always executed. So. My understanding of what is happening, and if anyone from Salesforce is watching this video and would like to comment, that would be fantastic to help us all, is that when we run the return statement here within the catch block, it then runs the finally block. If the return statement is there, then what it does is it takes the cached copy of the local variables at that instance and returns them. And if not, then it's take, it takes this copy of the variables when they were cached and returns them. So what we've got to be aware of when we're using try-catch finally blocks is wherever we put our return statement, we need to be aware of the different behavior that this can cause in how it returns our values, as this can affect the way that our system uh, responds to errors and issues that we have. If you have any comments or questions about this video, please leave them below. Thanks again to Anup for uh, submitting the idea so that I could uh, put it up here, um, and there'll be another video in a week's time.